Today, we talk about death. More specifically, the death of cells and why you get old and wrinkly and white-haired and no-haired. Firstly, who am I? That doesn't matter. What matters is you and what you can do about the thing that nobody likes called death. Death is simple. Is it a deterioration of cellular integrity due to a reduction of chromosome lines during mitosis? What? Firstly, like chromosomes. They are structures of DNA in the center of every cell that carries genetic information about each person. Half from your mom and half from your dad. Now, what is mitosis? Mitosis isn't a fancy way of saying cell division. The cells in your body go through it every day. After undergoing mitosis once, there are two cells. After another round of mitosis, there are four. This process continues over and over, and this is how your cells divide and your body grows. Every time a cell undergoes mitosis, it needs an exact copy of the chromosome and so replicates its DNA. DNA replication isn't perfect, and every time it replicates, it loses a small piece of DNA at the end of its strands. But the slightest piece of DNA could be vital. So if you cut off a small piece, the whole DNA strand could become useless. But your body isn't stupid, and they found a way to deal with this. Tell them yours. These are junk DNA that your body puts at the end of each chromosome, so then when they go through mitosis and the ends get cut, it only cuts the junk DNA, and your real DNA stays intact. To represent the genes in our body, let's use some real genes. Nice. The legs are going to be our telomeres, and the rest of the genes are going to be the rest of our chromosomes. Let's say the cell goes through mitosis. The DNA is replicated, and its strands are cut. And the other side? Let's say that this happens again to the cells re-go through mitosis, DNA is replicated, genes are cut. And again. You don't have to go through mitosis many times, so genes are still usable. Ugly, but usable. But eventually, the telomeres run short, and they start cutting it into the actual DNA. These genes are going to become useless. This is called the Hayflick limit. Named after the scientist who discovered it, Leonard Hayflick. He discovered that the Hayflick limit in a young and healthy human is about 50. And at this point, cells reach senescence, which is a fancy way of saying they die. Yep. Let's call this coin cell 1. Cell 1 undergoes mitosis and deteriorates slightly. It keeps dividing over and over and over again, each time showing your telomeres. And after 50 division, reaches senescence and dies. It may appear that death by the shortening of telomeres is unavoidable. But there is an enzyme called telomerase that solves this. In fact, cells that are exposed to telomerase have no Hayflick limit and are biologically immortal. You might think that this enzyme is hard to come by, but in reality, it's common, and it can even be found in some cells of our body. Do you want to know the names of these immortal cells? Cancer. In fact, this is the reason why cancer is so deadly, because it never reaches senescence, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing, eventually developing the tumor. Cancer-like mutations happen relatively often. This only becomes a problem when the cells enable the production of telomerase. Or else, after 50 divisions, the Hayflick limit, they die off. Some scientists theorize, and this is the reason why we have a Hayflick limit, to stop cancer. How ironic is that? The reason why we age is so we don't die. Let me try that again. Our body purposely ages so that we can live longer. There's also another element that contributes to our aging. This is because of the wear and tear within our cells. When our cells go through mitosis, small errors are bound to occur. And alone is no big problem. But over time, they accumulate. The accumulation of these errors create molecules with unpaired valence electrons, also known as free radicals. So what are free radicals? Free radicals are unstable molecules that are to look for other electrons and steal them from molecules. Over time, these free radicals build up within the cell and leads to its destruction. But again, there is a solution, and this time, it isn't a deadly disease. Antioxidants. You may have heard that word before, maybe on the label of some yogurt or granola bar, but they are just a molecule with an extra electron that is willing to give it up to a free radical, yet not turn into a free radical themselves, thus putting a stop to the chain. Let's imagine for a second that this puzzle is a cell, and each piece is a molecule. A free radical is just a molecule missing an electron, in this case, a puzzle. In an attempt to stabilize themselves, they steal an electron from one of their neighbors. Their neighbors thus become a free radical themselves. They in turn steal a puzzle link from one of the other molecules, and so the cycle continues. Over time, this leads to the deterioration of the cell due to broken bonds between molecules. Over years and decades, the buildup of these free radicals creates serious issues for your health, and ultimately lead to what we call aging. Free radicals are created every day in your body. Things like smoking and drinking create them. But even things like exercise, all that many good qualities, do create free radicals. But some things are unavoidable, like eating, for example. <laughs> and sunlight. But out of all of those, eating is the one that creates the most free radicals. In fact, research conducted on rodents, primates, and many other species have it proven that there's a direct correlation with the amount of calories you eat and the amount of years you live. There's even been research on mice, then the reduction of 30% of the caloric intake increased their life expectancy by 30 to 40%. That's massive. We have yet again another case of something that is essential to our survival that ages us. With all the research currently being done on aging, it's more than likely that we're going to be the first generation to live forever. Thank you for listening, and I hope you know more about the vastly complex and misunderstood process which is aging.